In this week's program, we'll be hearing about a new approach to democracy, which would give more power to the people. Many of us might be wondering if the democratic system is up to the task. Roy Madron and John Jopling, co-authors of a book launched tomorrow, say it's definitely not. We need a new system, a Gaian democracy, and the name Gaia means Earth. Earlier, I spoke to Roy Madron. The subtitle of the book, in fact, is Redefining Globalization and People Power. And if we start with people power, that stems back to an idea on which they governed the city-state of Athens two and a half thousand years ago. And for nearly 200 years, until um, Alexander the Great smashed it, the Greeks, uh, the Athenians, uh, ran their city by having ordinary citizens, literally in off the street, in their thousands, come in three or four times a month to decide the great issues of the day, whether to go to war or not, for example, uh, whether to uh, sack this general or, the, or, or appoint that general, or how much taxes to pay. Uh, all the uh, great issues of the day were decided in that way by open debate by thousands of people out of a population, out of a, a citizen's body of about 40,000, 50,000. Slaves and women weren't involved, I'm afraid, but that was two and a half thousand years ago, so we might be able to do something different nowadays. So that's the principle of it, is that, uh, and that was an extremely successful city-state, and it fought off Sparta and all kinds of Persians and all sorts of people like that. So, um, and it had one of the greatest cultures ever known to man. And that was all within the context of a form of democracy known as people power, demo, people, democracy, power. So that was the foundation of it. But then, of course, the, the elites of who are mainly sort of Spartan uh, quizzling, as you could call them, um, uh, uh, had among their number Plato and Socrates and Aristotle. So they proceeded to spin against, brief against, and the Plato's great books are in fact uh, an attack upon Greek democracy, an anti-democratic attack. And of course, the elites of the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th century all loved Plato. So we have now a form of democracy which Plato would like because it basically shuts the people out of those decision-making processes and leaves it to people who know best, like Mr. Blair and Mr. Bush, all of those people who we can absolutely trust to do everything according to the highest possible moral principles and the best possible evidence, can't we? Well, they always say that's what they're trying to do. But of course, it's a, of course it's, a, it's a fantasy because it simply can't work. The reason why it can't work is partially because it's all about elections. And once you get into elections, you get into the possibilities of corruption. And so you have another... Uh, and once you get elections for competing elites, whether it's, you know, new Labour, new Tory, blah, blah, uh, tell the difference if you can, um, then you have got really just personalities and spin and propaganda as the basis on which people can make decisions. And 99% of the people people who are just as intelligent as Blair and Bush, or probably more so in some cases, are excluded from the process of taking decisions on the vital issues of the day. And would we have gone to war with Iraq if, say, 100,000 people had been involved in the decision? I don't think so. So that's the principle of it. And that the second thing is about the nature of the system that we're in, because, in fact, you can't understand how the importance of people power without understanding that we live in a hugely complex system. And the more complex the system, the more difficult it is to command how it works. You can only manage a system like that. You can only improve a system like that if all the people, or many of the people within the system, actually understand, A, it's, uh, what, it's, what it consists of, and B, what uh, they want it to be like in the future. So therefore, any change process, any large-scale reform, change, transformation in systems terms, is not doable unless you involve the people within the system in a very careful, structured, properly facilitated way. So that's the other part of it, the participative processes. In order to do that, that requires, paradoxically, the more participative you are, the more important the leadership role. So you need people in the leadership roles who believe in participation and people power as a way of managing change. 
Then you come to the question of globalization, redefining globalization. People talk about globalization as if it was all about just capitalism. But in fact, it's about our systems of government, it's about our economic theories, it's about us, the way in which um, consent is manipulated by the press, it's about uh, the, um, uh, the theories underlying our current uh, global systems and national systems and representative democracy. All of those things are part of the current global system, and they're driven in order, and it's the way it is partially, in order to satisfy what we call the global monetocracy, because in fact the, uh, the economic system on which everything depends is driven by uh, the fact that 97% um, of the money in circulation, uh, uh, in, in use that we use, not in circulation, in, in the money that we use, um, has been lent to us by a bank at interest. And we think the government creates money. It doesn't. Banks create money. And that is why we have to chase after growth the whole time. That is why we're tearing down the planet in order to satisfy the need to constantly grow the economy in order to satisfy the demands of this global monetocracy. So redefining globalization means the rethinking what, the, what globalization is about. And that's where the Gaian concept comes in. Will everybody be familiar with what Gaia is? I don't think so. You'd better <laughs> okay. explain what you mean. Okay. A uh, scientist called James Lovelock in the uh, early 1970s uh, uh, proposed that the whole of the planet of Earth is the way it is, uh, is habitable by all forms of life, by many forms of life, billions of forms of life, and has been for about two billion years because life itself evolved. And life itself, somehow, without any kind of central control system, manages all the physical and biological systems which make it possible for life itself to, to continue and flourish. So how do you get to a Gaian democracy? Well, you get to a Gaian democracy by a political process. There's just no way that you can avoid actually setting up some kind of a political party that wants to go down that track that actually has got as its purpose the development of human systems that don't destroy the Gaian systems and destabilize them, but live harmoniously with them and with each other. So therefore, uh, it's a double whammy, if you like, is that in order to live harmoniously with each other, we've got to be, learn how to live harmoniously with the Gaian systems on which we depend. Otherwise, we're all in never deeper trouble. Gaia will survive. Gaia will manage, will adjust, adjust. Uh, over the last million years, for example, 90% of the time we have had ice ages. We're just in a very brief interregnum at the moment of about 10, 15,000 years, and an ice age will come again unless global warming completely changes the plot of the Gaian uh, 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 climate system. So we're in some very interesting times at the moment. And because we are now so many, we can't just uh, uh, think of ourselves as simple human beings. We're human beings who have the capacity dramatically to alter and to destabilize the systems on which all life depends. Um, and all the known forms of life, all the things that we cherish, trees, birds, uh, fishes and so on, depend. So we've really got to get our act together. And it's we are the people. And we have to be able to uh, think about how, what we need is some kind of a, a new kind of political movement which encapsulates, which embodies, which actually pursues purposefully as part of its purpose, not espouses, not spouts the, the rhetoric, but actually acts in that way. And um, that's possible. So how are we going to go about it here? We can only do it by starting by small groups, basically read the book, Please read the book. Um, people have liked the book enormously, are liking the book enormously. And uh, then start study groups. Do what other people do. And that is to say, I've read this interesting thing. Let's start thinking about it.